you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreaches throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. Turn to Genesis 1. The Lord seems to have me on the first six or eight chapters of Genesis a lot. But you know, if you go by the first 20 or 30 chapters of Genesis, you've got really the whole Bible. Everything that's in the Bible in different forms later on and different words, it's all expressed in the first chapter of Genesis. The most, most of it is in the first uh, 10 or 15 chapters. But <clears throat> when he started, he had already created everything. And um, Lucifer, who later became, was, was one of the, the chief three angels. Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. They're the three general angels. And there were a lot, I don't know, some kind of creatures up there at that time. And somewhere he, <clears throat> they went astray and God destroyed them pretty much. But he let Lucifer stay free. And one third of the hosts of, of angels and creatures at that time were given the right to, well, we hadn't been created yet, but they were given the right to uh, make choices about whatever they were doing, whatever went on at that time. Uh, we've discussed how Lucifer decided he, he could be the fourth member of the Godhead. But uh, when God decided and he cleaned out the ones who were not ready and he left Lucifer, which is the devil, Satan, whatever name you want to call him. Uh, he left them to be adversaries for us. <clears throat> and he did it that way so we could make the right decisions. So no one would ever say that he gave us a, a supernatural break, but he didn't give it to other creatures, maybe. We got just millions of planets up there. What do you think he did it, made it for? 
I think he's going to populate them at some point, if some of them are already. But we're going to be over them. I call you, hey, buddy, what's happening at Planet Xerox? <laughs> I'll be down there, I'll visit you. You have the party? Okay. <laughs> Whatever they do at that time. <laughs> and he, he said uh, that he wanted to make real children, not just creatures of his. He wanted them to be children of the living God. And that's what he's given us to be. This is so awesome, I think it just goes past us. And he's, he has made the decision for us to be part of the Godhead. But right now we're in a testing period. And I can remember one day he, I was just sitting there and he said, uh, he said everyone has to be tested. Everyone on the earth has to be tested. And so, I, I made a stupid remark like, but Lord, you know, think all these different people that you made, just millions and billions of people. And they're just, a lot of them just gonna end up in hell, can't you? You're gonna allow, just allow that to happen? And he yelled at me, he said, I said they must be tested. I went, <laughs> thou darest not speak any further. <laughs> That's, I mean, he, <clears throat> he's got that gentle side, but he's got the other side every once in a while. To let you know, I'm not just the boss, I'm God. So at any rate, he brought that up, that everybody's got to be tested. So, he looked down the annals of time and he saw every one of us, he knows us individually. It's like you can have three or four kids and you know them very well. He knows the billions of, of us and he knows each one of us individually. <laughs> That's so awesome. Anyway, <clears throat> let's start at the beginning. We're getting close to the end, so let's start at the beginning again. All right, when he looked down at the earth, he looked down the annals of time, and to start with, let's look at Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. In the darkness he called night. In the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters that were, which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. 
and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. I want to say something here. <clears throat> you notice the evening is first. The evening and the morning. Not the morning and the evening. As we call it now. Also. Uh, we'll go ahead. I'll tell you that in a minute. And God, and God said. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. To divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs. And for seasons. And for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth. Which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. In the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, it, the cre and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Continue. Everything is after his own kind. He took note of that. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's God's power. Yeah. Yeah. He made... He made every, everything after its own kind. And when he got to humans, he created us after his kind. Mm -hmm. We are actually little God children that he has not allowed us to have full power yet. But we're going to be like him. <laughs> 
I don't know, I, I get tickled every time I think about it. Let's look at uh, Psalm 107. Okay. Now the times, lately I've noticed a lot of people are getting sick <coughs> and having serious attacks. I don't know <coughs> why this is. People have always gotten sick, but it seems like more serious attacks have been happening lately to most people. And so, since that's happening, <coughs> healing and belief in healing needs to increase. I don't know if you guys are practicing walking with supernatural health, but you really should because things are getting crazy and crazier and it's going to get worse. You know, we're having all these storms and uh, hurricanes and, and it's not just happening here, it's happening all over. And it's just the beginning of what's about to start taking place. Okay, look at verse 20, Psalm 107. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Go ahead. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. <laughs> hey, read one more verse. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. <laughs> Amen. You start to get a little idea of God's mind, how he thinks. Oh, that men would praise him and give him, offer him the thanks, the gift, the sacrifice of healing and all the different things that he has for us. He's, he's like, uh, it's just waiting on us to get to the place where he can. He's just so anxious sometimes. He wants to give us these things and bless us and give us this uh, condition even that we have. He wants to bring us into the place where we'll be able to move in the realm that he is as God children. And he, he wants us to have it more than us. And he's like, oh, that man would learn to praise me. <laughs> uh, that's the spirit of, of that, that verse. We need to, we need to really uh, overcome our, our attitudes. <clears throat> All right, we, <clears throat> we read the part where it says um, 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Keep going. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Yeah. And, and God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And he made us to have dominion 
and, and read those lines there. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's what I want you to see. He is preparing us to have dominion over every living thing. Fowls of the air that fly around, fish and creatures in the ocean, creatures on the land, whatever kind they were and they are, we're designed to have dominion over them. And we're going to be able to speak to them and they will have uh, total submission to whatever it is we're going to say to them. Just like God says things now, whether, whether people or creatures understand, they understand what he's saying, and they don't necessarily speak back to it, but they hear and they understand. And we're going to be able to do that. And he wants us to understand the power he's getting ready to give us because we're going to be, in real sense, his children. And he wants us to be aware of what he's about to give us. Okay. <clears throat> God, Jesus came and paid the price for every sickness and every disease that's on the earth. And he gave us the ability to overcome it, to receive the healing of it, and to, and to demand that it leave our bodies. So that was then what he did, but he still is alive today. We still are supposed to as we continue to study and put it in our hearts and it becomes a part of our thinking when we get sick or things come at us and that we're supposed to be able to overcome it because of the power of the word inside of us and it was God's original way of healing us with his word he spoke his word and it healed us. Yeah. All right. Look at Mark 11. Look at 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Some translate it to say, the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith and have faith in God. Go ahead. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain shall do what? Say. Shall say. Go ahead. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, read that part again. Whatsoever. And he... Read, just start in verse 22. Okay. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, yes. and be thou cast into the sea, yes. and shall not doubt in his heart, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, and those things that he said, he believes that what he 
he, you and I, say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. <laughs> Go ahead, 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and sh ye shall have them. Mm -hmm. How, <laughs> How much of this are you guys practicing? <laughs> He's saying that you're in sickness or anything like that attacks your body, you should speak to it and say, in the name of Jesus, leave my body. And expect it to start coming, dissipating inside of you. And just because you said it doesn't mean it's going to happen instantly. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW1367, that is tape offer number TITW1367. Hi. You know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.